When the 6 p.m. news on the BBC's first channel began, it was immediately apparent that something was wrong. The announcer reading the news was looking at the camera with a serious expression. She was wearing an inconspicuous dark blue, almost black, lace blouse. When the main news in England starts like this, there is usually bad news from the royal family. That's exactly what happened that day. A few minutes ago, we received breaking news from Buckingham Palace, that the King has been diagnosed with cancer, the announcer read out the statement from the palace. This is part of the protocol at such times. The statement continued as follows, during the King's recent hospitalization for a benign prostate enlargement, another problem was detected. Subsequent tests revealed a form of cancer. His Majesty has today embarked on a regular treatment plan, during which he has been advised by doctors to postpone his public duties. In this statement, it was stated that King Charles III would continue to conduct state affairs, and maintain his official written formalities. Stating that the King was absolutely positive about his treatment, and looked forward to returning to public duties as soon as possible. The statement continued as follows, his Majesty has decided to make his diagnosis public to avoid speculation, and in the hope, that it may contribute to public understanding for all people around the world affected by cancer. Buckingham Palace will not disclose the type of cancer, or the severity of the monarch's illness at this time. British media later reported that Charles personally informed his sons William and Harry, and his three brothers about the diagnosis of his illness. People close to Prince Harry said, he would fly to England in the coming days, to see his father. The relationship between Charles and his son has been tense for several years, as the public knows. After Harry and Meghan turned their backs on the British royal family, in January 2020, the relationship with the rest of the royal family had become increasingly tense. In a revealing interview with US talk show host Oprah Winfrey, and in the Netflix documentary Harry and Meghan, the US-based couple, among other things, made heavy accusations. Harry had also harshly criticized the royal family, in his memoirs reserve. Meanwhile, there is hope for a reconciliation between Harry, and his father. According to some British media reports, Harry celebrated Charles' 75th birthday last year, and sent him videos of his two children, Archie, and Lilibet. It remains to be seen whether the monarch's cancer diagnosis will now bring the family closer together. The news of the king's cancer diagnosis came as a complete surprise to the citizens of England and the Commonwealth. Charles and Camilla, had attended a church ceremony on Sunday in Sandringham, about a two-and-a-half-hour drive northeast of London, near the King's private estate. It was Charles' first public appearance, since his prostate treatment a week earlier. The footage shows nothing out of the ordinary, the couple smile, and wave as they walk towards the church. Throughout Monday evening, many get-well wishes poured in from all over the world. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak wrote on the X short message service, formerly Twitter, I wish His Majesty a full, and speedy recovery. I have no doubt that he will be back to full strength in no time, and I know that the whole country wishes him a speedy recovery. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau wrote on X, like Canadians across the country, and people around the world, my thoughts are with His Majesty King Charles III as he undergoes treatment for cancer. The message continues, we send him our best wishes, and wish him a speedy, and complete recovery. Donald Trump also commented on the King's diagnosis. He is a wonderful man whom I got to know well during my presidency, and we are all praying for his speedy, and complete recovery. He wrote on his online network Truth Social. U.S. President Joe Biden was also concerned about King's cancer diagnosis. Asked by a reporter about the disease during a meeting in Las Vegas, in the U.S. state of Nevada, he said, I am worried about him. I have just learned of his diagnosis, 
and I hope to be able to speak to Charles soon. Members of the British royal family have not yet commented on the king's illness. The BBC focused on the news of the king's cancer diagnosis, on its news channel BBC News until late in the evening on Monday. However, programs on other channels continued as planned. It has long been recognized that public television strives to find an appropriate balance in its coverage of royal family affairs. In the past, the BBC has often been criticized for its reporting. And with good reason, when Prince Philip, the husband of Queen Elizabeth II, died in April 2021, the BBC suspended all of its normal programming on BBC News for several days, and instead broadcast, 24 hours of live coverage of the death of the high-ranking royal. The BBC also broadcast many special programs on other channels. This continuous coverage was not well received by the British public as a whole. Despite generally high levels of sympathy for the British monarchy, more than 110,000 BBC viewers complained that the programme was one-sided. This was one of the most negative reactions to BBC journalism in the broadcaster's history. Reactions, following the death of Queen Elizabeth II in September 2022, were very different, with the country's television channels also immediately changing their schedules, and focusing almost entirely on the ceremonies, and state occasions following the death of the much-loved monarch during the 10-day mourning period. The BBC was no exception. However, the strong focus on the Queen's death did not trigger a negative reaction. Only a few hundred viewers complained about it. The difference between the reactions to the two events shows how dependent constitutional monarchies are on public perception and how quickly this public support can change. Charles' surprise diagnosis of cancer will therefore raise the question of the suitability of a head of state taking office in his mid-70s, when most people have been retired for several years. Charles was a crown prince, who had been waiting all his life, to ascend to the throne. Since then, he has carefully left his mark on the British crown. So far he has actually been, well received by the British public. More than 48% of respondents in a recent poll, said Charles was doing a good job. Only 9% thought he was incompetent. But now, King Charles III may face the biggest challenge of his life. After years of political and economic chaos, the Kingdom of Great Britain once again faces great uncertainty. Not because he is a king, but because he is a man afflicted with one of the most unrelenting diseases of our time, I wish King Charles a speedy recovery, and his relatives the strength to endure this difficult time.